Oklahoma going to Auburn, Alabama. 3.30 Eastern, ABC, Jordan Hare. This will be, I think this atmosphere is going to be electric. And I understand Oklahoma looked a little bit lackluster against Tennessee. Auburn has been extremely lackluster to this point in the season against uh, Power 4 Conference opponents. This one has college football sickos written all over it. I mean, this is a major pulse check game for both sides. Auburn, all kinds of alerts going off on the car. Like, you know, whenever you're driving your car and you see the check engine light come on, you drive it for a little bit longer and hope that light goes off. That was kind of what Auburn did with the whole Peyton Thorne situation. Switch to Hank Brown. Okay, hopefully the check engine light goes away. But instead, you had the change the oil light come on. You had the low tire pressure alert come on. Like, there's a bunch of alerts going on right now within the Auburn vehicle. We'll see who's playing quarterback for them this week. Hugh Freeze said in his press conference yesterday, quarterback's going to battle it out. I would expect we won't know anything until, gosh, at the earliest Thursday. But if I am if I'm using the, uh, the metric of what happened with the last quarterback change as our litmus test, probably not until Friday-ish. Whoever plays quarterback, they need to find a way to just take care of the football. I mean, that really is the end-all be-all. Four interceptions against Arkansas. Not even counting the running back coughing it up against Arkansas, right, running into the end zone. I mean, darn near within the five-yard line. Coughs it up. That changed the entire game. The frustrating thing for Auburn is it's hard to make this case, but there are plays to be made there. Like, Auburn averaged six yards a carry against Arkansas. There's plays to be made there. But you give the football away like Halloween candy, and you're not going to win the football game. You need this one to flip momentum if you're Auburn. Need it to flip momentum. This has a very last stand kind of vibe to it if you're the Tigers. Not saying that you mail in the season if you lose this one. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying if this is your trajectory year, you got to find a way to start trajectory going a certain direction because you haven't had that yet with the Cal loss and the Arkansas loss being as ugly as they are. College football sickos, Oklahoma fans, Auburn fans, whoever you're a fan of, it's college football. Nothing but college football on this show. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a minute of it, and so we know that you're a part of this college football community. Also, this show brought to you by our friends over at Price Picks. Daily Fantasy allowing us to squeeze the juice out of every single college football Saturday. When you use code HARDCOUNT, $5 in lineups gets you $50 in promo funds. Great way to support the show. Great way to, again, maximize your college football Saturday, and great way to let the people at Price Picks know we got some college football diehards dialed in to this show. Back to the prediction. Now, speaking of ugly, man, Oklahoma last week against Tennessee, the first half was ugly. I mean, three turnovers. There's a reason why you went to Michael Hawkins Jr. at quarterback over Jackson Arnold. And I want to make sure we're clear on this. I think that Jackson Arnold is probably still a really good quarterback. And if you disagree with that, I would say based on what? You'd say the four games you saw or whatever it was. Say four games, okay, that's, that's what you're basing it off of? I mean, the start to the 2024 season is your hill you are willing to die and say, I've seen enough. He's not our guy. He can't play the position. I would say, okay, you're entitled to your opinion. To me, I'm looking at the offensive line and I'm like, man, you just, you don't have what you need around him. And that was always the thing for us going into this season was when you look at Oklahoma, the context is so crucial for them. I love the skill players, even though they're dinged up. I like Jackson Arnold, but you got one and a half Mississippis back there to make a good decision with the football. You give anybody one and a half Mississippis to play quarterback, they're not going to thrive. And we've seen that now with Jackson Arnold. So making the switch to Michael Hawkins Jr., if you put him in a pro day setting with Jackson Arnold, Jackson Arnold would probably look better. My opinion. However, with what you don't have up front, Michael Hawkins provides a lot more electricity with his legs, can cover up some of those holes, and showed it against uh, Tennessee in the second half of that game. Dude's a freaking warrior. So how do they look now with a little bit more tape on young Michael Hawkins Jr.? Is that something Auburn's able to take advantage of? Remains to be seen. But uh, you do not want to lose straight, or lose two straight, rather, staring down the barrel of Texas, South Carolina, then at Ole Miss. Not really a way that you want to live if you're Oklahoma. So this is the kind of game now where you try and flip the script, get things headed the right direction again, go with Michael Hawkins Jr., new offense, and we'll see how that rolls. Now, speaking of the new offense, I think that when you talk about the game plan for Oklahoma, it's got to be a lot of playing to Michael Hawkins Jr.'s strengths because he's a different quarterback than Jackson Arnold. That's why you're rolling with him. And I actually didn't hate the game plan as much heat as Seth Luttrell got after the Tennessee game. You got to blame somebody, so you blame the OC and you blame the quarterback. But 
I would expect it to be similar in the sense that I think they get Michael Hawkins on the perimeter a lot and try to create two-on-one situations with defenders. Meaning you want Michael Hawkins out on the edge and you want an overhang defender, whether it be a linebacker, a safety, a corner, and then a guy ideally behind that defender to put that defender in conflict. And Mike Hawkins Jr. now, the way that he can scoot, again, I think is going to make up for a lot of the issues they've shown on the offensive line to this point in the year. It is what it is. Your wide receiver room is banged up. You're breaking in five new players on the offensive line going into this season. Like, it's just it's the, the brutal, unforgiving world that is college football and the even more specifically the brutal, unforgiving world that is the SEC. Now, I think the advantage for Auburn here is you're playing a quarterback that is similar to the skill set that you just played against the week before in Taylor Green. And Taylor Green took a beating. There's no way around that. Like, I was impressed by the way that he just took shot after shot after shot. He was only sacked three times, but still took what felt like in the neighborhood of double-digit hits and kept coming back for more. The tenacious defense from Auburn, I think, is actually in good position with playing Michael Hawkins Jr. So if it's me, again, going back to Seth Luttrell, I want to give... Michael Hawkins Jr., simple answers offensively. I want quick game. I want RPO. I want quarterback run. I want to make it as simplistic as possible because Jordan Hare will be on fire. I mentioned that last stand vibe. Uh, That crowd knows it too. They know it's a true freshman quarterback rolling in. All right, so they're going to make sure they give him all that and then some. Now, Auburn, offensively, I'm expecting a lot of uh, what Hugh Freeze mentioned in his press conference to start the week. Again, I don't know who's playing quarterback. But the quarterback, whoever it is, their decisions the last couple of weeks have hurt us as an offense. Sounds harsh, but pretty true. Side note, a lot of people saying Hugh Freeze throwing his quarterbacks under the bus. Sounds like he's just saying we need more from our quarterbacks. Does anybody with two sets of, or or with a set, I guess, two eyeballs disagree with Hugh Freeze? I don't think so. And they shouldn't. It is worth noting they have been pretty effective running the football. Even in their losses, man, they're averaging right around four and a half yards of carry between the Cal and Arkansas game. I think it's a heavy dose of run. I think it's a heavy dose of RPO. I'd be wildly surprised if we saw Auburn make this a game where their quarterback has taken a three-step drop a handful of times. I really think it'll be run, run, run when they overcommit, get some pass game going, but it's going to be a very uh, simplistic game plan when it comes to this one. Now, if you're Auburn, you need the Hugh Free special, man. You need that special sauce. You need the, uh, the reason as to why he is a head coach in college football, what he does offensively to show itself in this spot. And you know what I'm talking about. You're thinking back to the game against Georgia last year. I mean, they had Georgia's number, man. Dialed up the perimeter run game. They had window dressing. They had Georgia running every which way. Same deal with Alabama. In both those games, he had Peyton Thorne throwing for less than 100 yards and still found a way to, quite frankly, should have won the Alabama game and then be within a touchdown of the Georgia game. So the bottom line here is you need the Hugh Free special sauce in this game. Pretty much goes without saying, but when you're playing a top 10 defense, feels like that needs to be addressed. So when you predict this game, man, which is harder for you to believe? Is it harder to buy into the idea that a true freshman quarterback can roll into Jordan Hare and play well enough to beat Auburn in his first start? be a little bit hard for me to get on board with. At the exact same time, is it more difficult to believe that this Auburn offense is going to have a get-right kind of game and look different than they did against Cal and Arkansas, against a top-10, savvy, salty, complex defense in Oklahoma? Again, you got to factor in the Hugh Freeze uh, potential special sauce scenario, which definitely could show itself, but I think the off-script plays from Michael Hawkins Jr., where the play breaks down, Auburn brings a blitz, looks like it's getting home, Hawkins gets out of trouble, scrambles for seven yards, it was third and five, he gets a first down. I think those are the back-breaking plays in a low-scoring game that allows Oklahoma to escape with a dub. So again, I think it's close. I think it's going to be a great game. Saw some pushback on Twitter, but I think it's going to be a great game, man. I got Oklahoma winning this game 24-21. to So by that logic, with the line being at two and a half, At the time of us being live, we're taking Oklahoma to win, and we're taking Oklahoma to cover.